Hi, girls and parents. Welcome to the second installment of the Daisy Paddle Program. I have a special shout out this week to the new Daisy Troop in Moravia, New York. Let me know where you are from. Maybe next week you'll get a shout out too. Last week, we learned from Lupe to be honest and fair. Type in the comments what you did to be honest and fair. Do you remember, did you remember to practice that, the ways of being honest and fair? We also learned from Sunny about being friendly and helpful. Were you friendly and helpful around the house this week? I hope so. Let me know how you were helpful. This week, Zinni is going to teach us about being considerate and caring, and Tula will help us learn about being courageous and strong. But before we do that, let me show you something. Do you, did you ever wonder what Daisy Girl Scouts wear? Well, they have two choices. They can wear a blue vest or a blue tunic. I do have a tunic I can show you. This is my granddaughter's tunic. <clears throat> Some of the things on a uniform will be the same for every Daisy. Up here at the top is the flag and the council patch. This says Girl Scouts, and this says Nipen Pathways, which is where we're from. And every council has a different name here. And then there's a five-digit troop number. As you can see, she's lost a number. But Lily's in sixth grade now, so this was very old. And over here is her insignia tab with her World Association pin that shows she's a member of the Girl Scouts World Association Worldwide. And this is her daisy pin. And then right here are those daisy petals that we're working to earn. And in the center is when you've learned your promise. And then each one of these petals that we're working on represents one of the laws. Also on the front of the vest or, or tunic, you will see these are journey awards. And those are other awards that you can earn as a Daisy Girl Scout. And this is her safety award pin. And this is a cookie award that she earned. And her membership stars belong on here, but she transferred her membership stars to her brownie vest. And on the back, of her vest, you can see fun patches from different events that she participated in. Um, and every girl has different fun patches that they do. Um, it depends on what they've done and where they've been as a Girl Scout. Um, this was where she went to a Mom and Me event. And this one was from a service unit encampment with Mid Lakes and K Wasco service unit. And this was a gift of caring patch from cookies. This was an early bird registration patch. And they're all, I mean, you would have to ask a girl what all of them are for because I can't keep track. So these events mostly are for fun and they're not, they're not part of a badger journey. So do you think maybe your uniform will have lots of patches like Lily's? So last week, we learned the Girl Scout sign. Do you remember what it is? Let's see. Can you do it? Remember? That's correct. With your right hand and three fingers. Very good. Now let's say the Girl Scout promise. I'll still do it one line at a time and let you repeat after me. On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Very good. You keep practicing at home, okay? And maybe by next week, you'll have it down. Are you ready to hear from Zinni? I want you to think about how you can be like Zinni, okay? Here we go. This is Zinni's story. It's called The Art of Sharing. And when you've 
earned Zinni's paddle, you will know how to be considerate and caring, just like Zinni the Zinnia. Ring, ring, the bell at Paddle Elementary School rang. Through the halls, the flower friends jumped up from their desk. It was time to go to the art room. <clears throat> it was one of their favorite places in the school. Zinni was especially excited because she loved to draw and to paint. She was already thinking about the new picture she wanted to make. It would show all of the flower friends having a party in the daisy flower garden. So this is the picture she was imagining in the flower garden. She burst into the art room ahead of everybody, and she was the first one there. I'm in luck, she said, grabbing several bottles of paint. She put them in front of the easel with a blank piece of paper. I can get all of the colors I want to make in my painting. The other flower friends came into the room. Oh, look, there are new coloring books, Clover said. She picked up three of them. Gloria and Jerry each took two more. They put the coloring books on the table by the window and sat down. Rosie rushed over to the cupboard that held the crayons and the markers. She grabbed a bin and took it to the table by the door. And Vi and Lupe did the same thing. The two groups of flower friends stared at each other. Wait a second, said Clover. We need crayons and markers to color in the coloring books. Well, we need coloring books to use our crayons, said Rosie. Hmm, I think they have a problem. What do you think? Zinni looked at her friends, and none of them were very happy. Then she saw a goldfinch standing shyly by at another easel that had a painting of a tree on it. The painting wasn't quite finished, and only half of the leaves had been painted. Zinni glanced down at the bottles of paint she had in front of her. Oh, I'm sorry, she said to the goldfinch. I was so excited about my picture that I took all of the paint. That wasn't very considerate of me. We should share. What colors do you want? Thank you, the goldfinch said with a big smile. I'd like a bottle of green paint to add more leaves to my tree, please. Clover and Rosie watched as the goldfinch began painting happily. Zinni's right, said Clover. Sharing is a way of caring for your friends. She turned to Rosie. Rosie, why don't you take one of these coloring books? Jerry and Glory, Gloria smiled as they held out their stacks of coloring books to Vi and Lupe. Yes, pick the one you like, Jerry said. Gloria nodded. After all, we can only color one picture at a time. Thanks, Clover, Rosie said. Do you want to use some of the crayons and markers? When you're done, we can trade. That's a great idea, Vi and Lupe said together. All the flower friends sat down to color. It was so much nicer when we can all paint and color together. And when we're done, we'll have a beautiful art gallery to show our friends and family. The end. So, what, why did Zinni forget to be considerate and caring at first? Was she excited to get to the art room and paint? Because she really likes art class, doesn't she? What about you? Is that what you like to do too? What reminded her to act in, in a considerate and caring way? What do you think? Was it her friend the goldfinch looking kind of sad? Do you think that her flower friends felt happy when they shared their coloring books and crayons and markers instead of keeping it all to themselves? 
Yeah, I think so too. Can you think of some ways that you can be considerate and caring at home? Maybe you can type some in the comments and let me know. Or can you draw a picture of yourself doing some of the things that you do at home and hang it up where you can see it to remind yourself to be considerate and caring every day? Or maybe you can even post your picture in the comments too and we can all see it. So, because you could come back to this video later. So, before we go to Tula's story, last week we played a game called Daisy Says. Do you remember how to play it? Because we got to wiggle a little bit, you know. It's kind of hard sitting still. All right? You remember? You remember? Okay. Daisy says, touch your shoulders. Daisy says, touch your hair. Daisy says, touch your neck. Daisy says, clap your hands. Daisy says, touch your neck again. Daisy says, pretend to wash your hands. Daisy says, wash them some more. Keep washing. Daisy says, keep washing some more. Daisy says, clap your hands. Daisy says, pat your head. Daisy says, Daisy says, touch your shoulders. Okay, clap your hands. Did I catch you? Did you notice what I did? I didn't say touch your face anytime this week, did I? Because we're all trying to remember not to touch our face, aren't we? Yeah, we have to remember that. Okay, so moving on. So let's hear what Tula has to say about being courageous and strong and if you have it, oh, I touched my nose, didn't I? Oh, it's so hard to remember. I will remember to go wash my hands as soon as we're done with the video. Tua's story. Standing up for Darla. Are you ready? When you've, when you've earned Tula's petal, you will know how to be courageous and strong, just like Tula the Tula. Ring, ring, ring. The morning bell had just rung at the Petal Elementary School. It was time for recess. The flower friends headed outside to the playground. Who wants to play hopscotch? Tulip asked. Tula the tulip asked her flower friends. I do, Zinnia replied. Me too, Jerry said. The flower friends ran over to the hopscotch board. You go first, Tula, Jerry said. Okay, Zinny. Ready, set, hop. Giggling as they took turns, the flower friends began to hop. Hop, hop. Then Tula noticed some dandelions playing kickball nearby. Tula Darla, one of the smaller dandelions, was being teased. Tula didn't like to see anyone being treated unkindly. I should tell them to stop, she thought. But what if they start being mean to me? Maybe I should pretend I don't see it happening. Should I pretend I didn't see anything? Then Tula saw a tear trickling down Darla's face. I have to say something, she thought. Even if I'm a little scared, I know I can't. I can act with courage. She marched over to the dandelions. Hey, everyone, Tula said. I can see that Darla is sad. How about if everyone plays together? You can't tell us what to do, one of the dandelions said. Yeah, another one chimed in. Tula knew she didn't have to fix this by herself. She turned to go find an adult. But the school principal, Miss Evergreen, had walked over. She had heard everything that Tula and the dandelions had said. Tula's right, Miss Evergreen said. Remember, teasing hurts people's feelings. The dandelions hung their heads. 
We're sorry, Darla, the dandelion said. Do you and Tula and your friends want to play kickball with us? Sure, Darla replied. That would be fun. Tula went back to Jerry and Zinni and told them that the dandelions invited them to play kickball. That sounds great, Jerry said. We're glad you were courageous and strong enough to ask the dandelions to stop teasing Darla. Maybe we'll make some new friends because of it. So, what do you think? <clears throat> when did T Tula show that she was courageous and strong? Can you type those anything in the t comment box? That's right. When the dandelions, when she told the dandelions that everyone should play together and she looked for an adult to help her, didn't she? How do you think Darla felt when Tula asked the dandelions to stop teasing her? Was Darla glad that somebody stood up for her? How do you think the dandelions felt after Tula and Miss Evergreen asked them to stop teasing Darla. Can you put that in the comments? Do you think they were sorry and they were probably a little embarrassed that they were being bullies? How can you practice being courageous and strong this week at home? Can you put some suggestions in the comment box? Maybe it'll give somebody else some ideas of what they can do, too. And while you're thinking about it, maybe this week you could draw a picture maybe of an animal that you think is courageous and strong and put that where it can remind you to be courageous and strong and how you would like to ask, act. Talk to your mom and dad about people in real life or in a book that you're reading or a movie or a TV show that you're watching about people that might be courageous and strong? And why do you think they're, they're showing this? So you think about that. Moms and dads, there's even more Girl Scout activities that you're, you and your daughters can do online. Our council, Girl Scouts of Nine Pan Pathways, has programs every day at Facebook Live. Some of the programs are for any age and some are just for a specific age level. Our www.gsnipen.org page also has a stay-at-home challenge for girls. Um, and it, it looks kind of like this when you find the page on our website. Um, girls of any age complete, can complete the challenge and earn a fun patch. And GSUSA has a new program called Girl Scouts at Home. You can... In, enjoy access to badge activities, journeys, videos, and so much more. Um, enjoy, fresh content will be uploaded to that page every week. And there's, so there's lots of ways to stay connected to Girl Scouting, either individually or as a troop. So be sure to tune in next week to hear from Mari and Gloria and learn what it means to be responsible for what I say and do and to respect myself and others. If you have any questions, you can send them in the comments or you can email me or contact me at dclark at gsnipen.org or 315-698-9400 extension 2312. That's all for this week and you have a good day. Good night.